Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Another rankings video for you today, or well, kind of, it's not a complete ranking of uh, the Judgment Day DVDs. This is just like my top five favourite at this time. That could change in the future, as I said to you before in many of my ranking or top five videos. My thoughts and opinions change, you know, from time to time. And I'm going to let you know now I don't own... Judgment Day 1998 in your house. That's the only one I'm missing out of the Judgment Days. So that one's not included in this list at this time, but I may consider it for a future list if I uh, was to add it, you know, in the next time I do a top five. So as it stands at the moment, these are my five favorite Judgment Days. You might not agree with me. I'd like to hear yours below in the comments, what your top five are, but here goes anyway. So in fifth place, I've decided to go with Judgment Day from 2007. Now, um, this was the time when Vince McMahon was feuding with Bobby Lashley over the ECW Championship, and they're bringing in his son, um, I was going to say his son Umaga then, bringing in his son Shane McMahon, and uh, obviously Umaga for a bit of muscle as well to back him up. And we had that feud with... Uh, between Edge and Batista for the World Championship, and then there's Cena and Great Cali there as well. Yeah, we had Ric Flair versus Carlito. We had that three-on-one handicap match for the ECW World Championship, which was definitely fair, I thought. Yeah, definitely the McMahons and Umaga against Lashley. Yeah, definitely. Poor Lashley. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that, that was a fun match. I did like that. The Flair Carlito was quite a reasonable match, I thought. Um, CM Punk and Elijah Burke. I could never really get behind Elijah Burke. No disrespect to him. I think he was better in TNA as the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro anyway, but that's just my opinion. Shawn Michaels versus Randy Orton had a, he had a good feud together as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, Edge and Batista for the World Championship, as I was saying earlier. Good stuff. Chris Benoit MVP's uh, two out of three falls match for the US Championship. Very good stuff. That's another reason I kind of wanted to add this one to the uh, list as well. Got the Hardys versus Trevor Murdoch and Lance Cade for the World Tag Team Championship, which was okay. And to believe it or not, to be honest, I actually enjoyed the John Cena versus Great Cali WWE Championship match. Great Cali pushed heavily throughout 2007 and... Um, I was just talking about him yesterday, funnily enough, uh, to my friend Nathan, the wrestling guy. Go check his channel out, guys, because he was reviewing um, One Night Stand 2007. That's where I was having a discussion about uh, the great Cali with him, too. And, uh, yeah, good year, great Cali had. Royal Rumble, he, he was pretty dominant in that. He was just throwing everybody out left, right, and center. I think he made it like seven eliminations within the first few minutes of being in there or first minute or so of being in there, should I say. And then, you know, he had that great uh, exchange with the undertaker and the undertaker got rid of him. I know a lot of people fucking hate him and, you know, he's a complete joke, but I actually liked him as like one of those monster heel kind of unstoppable kind of type, really good stuff. And him against Cena here. Very good. I did like that. Um, yeah. The uh, controversial finish of this one, you know, it, it left the door open for another match. And then we had that uh, the following month's uh, one night stand. I do believe that was the one after this. But yeah, great stuff, though. Great Kelly. Judgment Day 2007. And yes, I know I'm going to get shit off of a few of you <laughs> for, for backing the Great Kelly. Anyway, in fourth place. And uh, here we go again with the Great Kelly. There he is on the front. So we have Judgment Day 2006. There's um, there's the disc and there's the extras. Before I, uh, I'll show you the matches on the back anyway now. So, so yeah, uh, Gregory Helms versus Super Crazy for the Cruiserweight Championship. I thought that was quite fun. Julian Hall versus Molina was meh. We had WWE Tag Team Championship match, Eminem versus Brian Kendrick and Paul London, which was pretty cool. I, I liked the team of Kendrick and London. They, they were awesome on SmackDown, over on the SmackDown brand, I thought. And uh, yeah, good stuff, that one. 
Chris Benoit versus Finlay, another good technical kind of match. Very good stuff. Kurt Angle versus Mark Henry. They had quite an interesting feud together. And I didn't mind that one. Uh, we had the King of the Ring final, Bobby Lashley versus Booker T. And this is like uh, the beginning of Booker T with the King Booker gimmick. Sorry for a bit of a spoiler there for you guys that didn't know that he was going on to win King of the Ring that year. And end up becoming World Heavyweight Champion as well. And I... You know that kind of stood out for me, and it was a good, um, it was a good time for Booker T, and I appreciate that. So that's why I appreciate this pay per view. And the Undertaker versus the Great Cali. So I'm going to talk about the Great Cali again. I know you're not oh, shut up, bunny, about Great Cali, but honestly, guys, when he sh when he showed up on the scene, I was just amazed by the guy. You know, Davari brought him in, and you know, Davari had a lot of shit with the Undertaker. He brought in, uh, brought Mark Henry to deal with him, and that didn't work. So fuck it, I'm going to get another bigger guy this time. So he brought in this tank, the Great Cali, this towering tank, and uh, he just dominated him, just completely destroyed the Undertaker, and he just seemed unstoppable in this match as well. And he, he picks up the victory here, and it, it just that means a lot to me, you know what I mean? Because Taker doesn't put over just anybody, so he must have saw potential in Great Cali and <laughs> look how it all turned out. Kiss Cam and all that shit. What the fuck? But 2006 and definitely 2007, good years for the Great Cali. The rest of it all went downhill. But yeah, that's memorable for me. And what wasn't as memorable though, unfortunately, was Rey Mysterio's World Heavyweight Championship run. It was against JB, JBL here. And yeah, the match was okay, but after winning the Royal Rumble and winning the World Heavyweight Championship, he didn't hold on to it for too long, which was a shame because, you know, he was really pleased with his accomplishment and wanted to respect Eddie as much as he could. But all good things have to come to an end, unfortunately. In third place, I decided to go with Judgment Day 2004. And um, this one... Well, this one always stands out for me, uh, stands out to me, sorry, for one particular reason. And that's, you, you probably guys are going to guess it already. And that's the Eddie Guerrero JBL match for the WWE Championship. The amount of blood Eddie Guerrero loses in that is just unbelievable. It has like pints and pints of it just all over the ring apron, all outside it. He just profusely bleeds, and I just felt so sorry for the guy. And after the match, apparently he went backstage and just collapsed. I'm not surprised. And the amount of fucking blood lost there. That was one of the worst I've ever seen in a wrestling match, especially on a WWE pay-per-view or premium live event or, or a WWE show in general. Yeah, that was very memorable. And I did ask Nathan, the wrestling guy, to review this. Um, I think it was earlier this year. Thanks for that, dude. And yeah, he he agrees with me. I think it quite it shocked him quite a bit as well. It was um, bit of, yeah, bit of a shocker that one. So yeah, there was that match that really stood out. Uh, Undertaker versus Booker T. I did like that feud, and I liked the story where Booker T goes to a witch doctor to, you know, get some voodoo spells to use against the undertaker and all that that was good shit i, I don't mind that it's pretty cool why can't we have more of those kind of storylines nowadays that would be really cool bring back some more darker characters and you know get a lot of that magic shit back and all that papa shango crap voodoo i'm into all that kind of weird shit so i i'd like to see it all back in wrestling good stuff good, uh, good match as well i didn't mind that one uh, and we had John Cena versus Rene Dupree for the US Championship. Uh, Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio versus the Dudley Boys. Rico and Charlie Haas, a very strange tag team that was. Just didn't seem well suited. It was like a love triangle thing going on because I think uh, Jackie, Jackie was involved in that as well. And so it was like Charlie was in love with Jackie. Jackie was in love with Rico. Rico was in love with Charlie. <laughs> Very strange storyline, but yeah, very cool though. 
Yeah, WWE tag team title match against Billy Gunn and Hardcore Holly. Another unusual tag team pairing. But SmackDown, they did put some good teams together and they always had some interesting wrestling match, I found. I found if you wanted the wrestling, you go to Raw. And if you wanted the big storylines, you go to SmackDown back then. But that's just my opinion. Scotty Too Hotty versus Mordecai. Mordecai made an impressive... Uh, debut i i would say um his build up to his debut was absolutely phenomenal and i think the plan was for him to eventually have a feud with the undertaker and he looked very 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 cool definitely the pale rider yeah good stuff but it's a shame it didn't work out for him and uh, he kind of fucked himself over from what i from what research i'd done read up on him and everything else he he messed his own career up and that's why his push came to a quick halt, I guess. Never really took off. Oh, well, his loss. Tory Wilson against Dawn Marie. I think that was over the Owl storyline. Uh, Tory Wilson, Al Wilson um, being her father. And Dawn Marie um, shagged him to death or something in a hotel room from what I remember. <laughs> Some fucking crazy shit like that. But yeah, good times. Anyway. Second favourite Judgment Day is 2001. I reviewed this recently. It was good to relive this again. Um, I'd forgotten most of it and to go over it again. It was pretty cool. Um, don't know why, but for part of me, some reason I thought Kane had lost that match against Triple H for the Intercontinental Championship. And I think that's why I left it for a while. But I kept getting that confused with... Um, I think it was a match in 2002 they had where it was... I think it was at No Mercy. It could have been that one. I get those two confused, those matches. I don't know why. They're completely different matches, completely different time and pay-per-view. But, yeah. But, that, yeah, it was a good match still. I'm not saying that because Kane won, but it was a very good match. And the right person did win. And we also had... Uh, Stone Cold against Austin in a no holds barred match for the WWF Championship. Yeah, you know, we go, you know, all my opinions on these matches anyway, guys. Go check out the review. Yeah, and we had China Lita, Benoit versus Angle, Rhino Big Show and Test in a triple threat hardcore match, Rikishi versus William Regal, and the tag team turmoil match. So that's why I'm not going to go into that one too much because you could uh, go and check out the review, please. And my first place choice is on a tagged classics, and it's Judgment Day 2000. Uh, with the Undertaker returns as a biker Undertaker. The American badass. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Or is it Kid Rock, first of all? I can't remember now. One of those two, yeah. Is he either Limp Biscuit, then Kid Rock, or... Kid Rock, then Limp Bizkit. I can't fucking remember. Shit. I'm ever so sorry, guys. I Still, I get everything messed up. It's all in my mind, but it's all jumbled. Whatever it was, it was fun. He was fun. I like both of those theme musics anyway, and you're probably going to tell me in the comments below anyway, aren't you guys? So thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, the return. It's kind of a spoiler, really, because you, you can know it's going to ruin the end of the main event because he's not listed on any of the matches there. So and the Iron Man match for the WWF Championship between The Rock and Triple H, sixty minutes. Rock, can you last sixty minutes with me? I'm the game. Well, that was a hell of a fucking match, I tell you, and um, definitely deserved to be first place in my rankings. Oh, not rankings. I keep saying rankings in my top five Judgment Days of all time at this time. But yeah, I loved that match. And yeah, The Undertaker's return just topped it off. It was a cherry on top of the cake. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Mwah. Loved it. Tag team tables match in the undercard. Road Dog and X-Pac against the Dudley Boys. We had submission match for the Intercontinental Championship. An excellent match between Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. No holds barred match. Fools count anywhere match. Big Show versus Shane McMahon. Triple threat match for the European Championship. Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko in that one. Rikishi and Tuchel versus Edge, Christian and Kurt Angle. And then we had special features include five post-match interviews on that one as well, it says. It's 
pretty cool so yes guys that is my top five favorite judgment days judgment day dvds of all time i'd like to hear yours in the comments below do you agree with mine mine's not the right one but it's still it's my one isn't it so <laughs> let me know let me know what you thought of this video i'm continuing to put these top fives together and i'll continue to do rank proper rankings ones as well in the future and i'll do a rankings one again properly and i'll watch all the judgment days one day when i get the 1998 one but that'll be some point in the future i'm not gonna go out and rush to find a copy of uh, well it'd be on a tagged classics i'm pretty sure uh with i think it might be with breakdown or something like that from 98 but yeah i'll get it eventually yeah thank you for joining me today hope you enjoyed the video guys subscribe give me a thumbs up i love those thumbs ups if I do thumbs ups, <laughs> thumb ups, there we go. That's the ones. Uh, yeah, I love them all. And thank you for being a wonderful audience. See you again soon. Goodbye for now.